maybe Matt Rose could help get more detail on this, but they, they, I think they've adopted something like 10.5% or thereabouts on invested capital. And, and if you had a major enough change in interest rates or something, you could argue that there should be some adjustment perhaps in one direction or another. Usually in the case of regulated utilities, they talk about return on equity, and you have it different amounts in different states, but some states it may be 11% and some states it may be 12 or something like that. It's usually in that range. With the, with the railroads, they've gone toward this return on invested capital, which includes debt and, and is an adjusted figure. And I, I don't think that's a crazy, crazy standard. I mean, I, the railroad, unlike the electric utility, when you get an allowed return in the electric utility, you're almost certain of earning it. I mean, if you behave yourself, and uh, it, your, your demand is never going to fall off that much, probably that you, you'll go way below your return. The railroad's got more downside in it if you run into a terrific industrial recession, so you're not as protected on the downside. But there should be some figure, and I would argue that the ten and a half percent or whatever, maybe on invested capital, that's been achieved by the four big railroads in recent years, something close to that or right around. And you want the railroads investing a whole lot more than depreciation. And I would think that would be an it's certainly an inducement to me to invest money in improving the tr transportation system. And on the other hand, if that return were far lower than that, it would be crazy to put money in because you can't, you, you can't change that railroad system and do something else with it. So I think the country and, and the railroad systems have a very common interest in not earning exorbitant profits or anything like that, uh, uh, but getting a decent return on what is sure to be much needed investment over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And, and I, I'd go along with, if the Surface Transportation Board says 10 and a half percent or some number like that, I think that is a, that's not a crazy number. Charlie? Well, yeah, the railroads have been a hugely successful system in terms of a regulated business. If you stop to think about it, the railroads of America have been essentially totally rebuilt in the last 30 or 40 years. They've improved the tracks, they've changed the size of the tunnels, they've improved the bridges. The average train can be more than twice as long and twice as heavy. In the, you can hardly imagine a business that's done a better job in adapting to the needs of the rest of us than the American railroad industry. And that's by and large been a system of wise rec regulation accompanied by wise management. And uh, that was not always the case. And if you go back a long time, neither the management nor the regulation was all that wise. But the existing system has worked very well for all of us.